Hey everyone, my name is Shane Sexton. I'm a cybersecurity instructor. And in this video, we are going to take a look at PII and privacy. So personally identifiable information. First off, let's define that. Well, it's anything that can identify a unique individual or uniquely identify an individual. So it could be a single data point, like a social security number that really just points to one person, or it could be a combination of data points that are enough to uniquely identify someone. So maybe a date of birth and an IP address is more than enough for us to say, well, those correspond to this person and only this person. So that's kind of what PII is. It's just the data or enough data to identify someone uniquely. And it is a bit of a challenge because there's lots of laws that protect PII, tons of them, but at the same time, we do need to collect it for business transactions or consumer transactions. Uh, financial institutions need to collect PII. And the list kind of goes on from there. So while we do need to protect it and there are consequences for not doing so, we also need to keep it around. We can't just not keep it. So one example of a PII law is GDPR, and that applies primarily to European citizens, but if you've got European customers or branches, then it applies to you too. There's heavy fines with things like GDPR, uh, and oftentimes uh, laws like that are going to define how you have to store data, uh, the protections that need to be in place, where data can be stored, uh, breach notification, time periods, so you might have to report within 72 hours, and so on and so forth. And if you don't follow these regulations, or if your customer doesn't, they might be subject to significant fines, reputational damage, or worse. So as far as the impact on MSPs, there are a few. First off, service providers, managed service providers can be held responsible for securing the PII that their data, that their customers are working with. So it might end up kind of splashing back on the MSP if there's a major breach affecting a customer. Customers themselves, of course, are going to have liability and they might have significant fines, reputational damage themselves if they are breached. And so what we wanna do wherever possible is use encryption for data at rest, data in transit, data wherever. We wanna encrypt it if it's at all possible. And that's sort of the key best practice with PII, encryption wherever possible. And you might need to follow the particular strictures of the regulations that you have to abide by, but it will typically say you either need encryption or you need a specific type of encryption. You just have to follow the regulation that applies. So encryption is absolutely a must. Multi-factor authentication is a huge win too, so that even if a password gets compromised or exposed, attackers can't get access to accounts. And threat monitoring, continuous monitoring, things like that will also help you detect and respond to attacks, breaches much more quickly and proactively. Just a little bit more, there are some other security controls you can put in place, DLP, right, to detect either intentional or unintentional exposure of data, data masking to remove maybe identifying characteristics in data and make it less of a breach were it to be breached. Principle of least privilege, maybe making sure that only uh, users and services that need to access the data or modify it can access or modify it and of course segregation of duties as well, where no one employee has the keys to the entire kingdom. So thank you very much for joining me. It's definitely an important topic. PII is really critical to protect, and I'll see you in the next video.